Hello again to the MAG fans and Dark Firebird members at DTA. Um, whether you're on Facebook, on the forums, or just cruising through the net at supersonic speed, hello and welcome back again. Um, as you all know from my previous video, MAG is dead. This beautiful little copy of this game here is no longer needed. I can take it out and use it as target practice. I have two of them. I actually have three copies of this. Um, this one's going to get cased in um, clear plexiglass. It's going to be cool. But the um, reason why I'm making this video again is this mag is going to be the Mag Week video. It's going to be the last time you're going to see me. And um, I just want to give you a bit of a background. You know, I, I started out with the L Rules. That's why I have my L shirt on. Uh, the L Rules tag out in 06 maybe. 2006. Um, I made the the account because I wanted um, a, a cool name on an anime site because I was, I'm a huge fan of Death Note. I love Death Note, and uh, I figured I'd sign up there. And needless to say, that site isn't around anymore, which really, 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 really sucks because it was full of some really cool people. And I took the name, put it on the PlayStation 3. When I got my first PlayStation 3 in 2009 after I graduated, I was ecstatic. Because it was the first time I would be experiencing online play with other people. You know, I'm, I'm not a big PC gamer. I don't like PC gaming. I find it laggy and tedious. <clears throat> Excuse me. But, I got it. You know, I, I played uh, Battlefield 1946 or 1943 or something like that for my first title. Really cool game. Um, it came with a copy of Uncharted Drake's Fortune. Loved that game. It was fantastic. And I had a lot of fun on it, but it wasn't multiplayer. So that was my real real multiplayer was Battlefield 1943. And then Mag came along. I heard about it when I was at, um, what was it? I was building a bridge with uh, Boy Scouts. And this kid that plays PlayStation 3 says, you know, they're going to be coming up with this big game. It's going to support 256 people. I'm like... I gotta get on board. So I start scouring the internet for the this this huge game because the only thing I know it's 256 people and lo and behold, Mag comes up. Like, wow, this, this is a pretty good title name. Oh, I go into it and oh they're gonna have a beta. So I get involved in the the little beta stuff and you know the game comes out, you have to download it and you know Download the beta, you play the beta, which was fantastic, you know, for being a beta, it was amazing. You know, the people didn't really know what to do, it was kind of like a whole jumble of random stuff, and then I decided to start a clan called Dark Trans Am. Dark Trans Am uh, had the tags uh, DF, capital D, capital F, and uh, it was uh, the Firebird name in it so it was dark firebird or dark trans am or because we we love the the firebird trans am series uh, you know the people i played with we, we love pontiac and i still too to this day i mean uh yeah fuck you gm for the stuff you did but you know we were huge fans of it really cool we had a good time it was a good time definitely and then the beta ended and i went back to resuming to playing 1943 I think I at that point I grabbed the other a couple of other games. I can't remember what they were. They were just random. Uh, PlayStation Home was a good time waster, and then came along the second one, which you had to go get a voucher for. Um, and I had that. I should have kept it, but I threw it away because I didn't see any need for it anymore. But I played that second one, and you know we we gained more members. I think we had about. 40 active members at one point or more and in the first month and then it closed again the beta closed again and then it became an open beta so you download the patch for the open beta and then there was this massive clan support system and all these people with different game modes and it was crazy that open beta that first month of mag was nuts um, 
then you know the the Dark Firebird or the Dark Trans Am series uh, name came. You know it went out, and uh, it, you know we went out and really owned a lot of people. Uh, it was a good time. You know, there's a lot of people that joined up with us, and then um, you know they were they were like, "Well, the Mag game is going to be coming up soon. It's going to be coming out on January 26th. Who's getting it?" Like uh, everybody raises their hand. I'm getting it. I'm getting. It, I'm getting. It, I'm getting it. So, come launch day, I camp out at GameStop. Um, I was there at six in the morning. Yeah, I waited about three or four hours until they opened to get this game. Um, granted, I was the only one there. I thought there would be a line of people at GameStop for this game, but I guess um, I was the only one in my whole fucking town that knew what it was. So, you know, I get the game. And, and the person at GameStop looks at me kind of funky, like, uh, you know, how'd you hear about this? And, you know, I, I told him, you know, where I found it, and I've been involved in the beta. I'm like, oh, that's cool, you know. Um, so I get the, I get the game, I, I get in my car, I drive home, and I pop the disc in, and none of these people that said that they were going to get mag were actually there. So here I am with this nice clan system that we had in, you know, the betas, and nobody there. What do I do? Where the hell do I go from here? Well, I certainly didn't want to join another clan, because I know what kind of crap that they have to put you through. Oh, we have to go through this training course, and that training course, you got to be on this time, when we say, you are you have to be on, and I'm good. I don't want any part of that. So. I recreate Dark Firebird, or Dark Trans Am into Dark Firebird. The DF became DTA in memory of the old clan. So it became DTA. And then the DF became Dark Firebird, so it became Dark Firebird DTA instead of Dark Trans Am DF. That's how we got our name. I started from the bottom up. I started recruiting as soon as I possibly could. You know, I, I went through the training list and, and hopped into suppression. And then I went to sabotage, and, I, and before you knew it, I was level eight, with no problem. And I think you only have to be level four or something like that to get there, to get to get past it. And there was only three game modes back then, so you had uh, not four. You had suppression. I don't really count it as a game mode; more like a training exercise. Suppression, sabotage, acquisition, and domination. You had uh, the three core game modes, and then suppression, and. Um, I hopped right in the saddle. It was amazing. I met some really cool people. That, you know, everybody was using their microphones at that point. Nobody just plugged it in and leave it sitting in their ear. They were talking. Everybody's playing tactical, and I was really not doing good at all. Um, and then I, I started doing well uh, my second day because I had all my some of my equipment and I started specking into things because at that time you had the old spec tree ladder and stuff. So, I found the forms after that. I think on the fourth day, I, I log in my computer. I'm like, I wonder if there's a form board for this. Type in mag forms. Here it is. Cool, right? Hop in on the mag forms. You know, I see all these elitist clans Sever, Raven, Valor. Nobody wants any part of those. You know, they're too big. They don't focus on individual member attention. And. They're boring. Um, so I start I start the Dark Firebird DTA thread, and one of the first people to respond was Gaffa, a former co-leader. And I say former because he kind of fucked this over pretty good, and he's not allowed back in ever again. It's life ban. Life ban, ban hammer. Um, so Gaffa responded, and we became instant friends. Uh, we had a lot in common, and he he was from the UK. It was a lot of fun, and um, then we got I believe it was uh, either Josiah or Wessex that came next. I believe it was um, Josiah. Josiah is also not there anymore, and it's because of Dust Five One Four. But life goes on, and he joined up, and we had a, a whole bunch of people. We had about you know, seven or eight people. So we had about a full squad. 
so we had me, Josiah, and Gaffa, and, and uh, a whole bunch of other members. Um, you know, the seven, eight, eight of them went really ma active, including Josiah and Gaffa. And I just decided to establish a leadership program so that everybody could, you know, you know, lead the clan, get the leadership experience that they needed with the squad leader slash platoon leader command and OIC and stuff. And then um, after that, it, we got Wedzex, and then we had um, Lethal Despair join up later, and then Mike, Jace. General Braddock brought a whole bunch of people in there. You guys, if you're still out there, you recruiting by General Braddock and Dark Firebird, come on back home. We don't, we have no problem with you. It, it doesn't matter what you're into, what your attitude or play style. You're still a part of Dark Firebird. So if you see this, you are a part of Dark Firebird. You, you can come back anytime you want. Um, we had General Braddock, by the time it was 2011, um, we were running three full squads a night and it was awesome we had some really cool matches I think we had about seven or eight different matches with um, the three full squads we lost our first one because I had no idea what the hell to do but after that we um, steamrolled everybody it was great it, it was a really good time and you know we, we gained members like uh, shot your face ran loud um, Steve, um, a couple of other ones, I, I'm, I know I remember, Crosslink was a part of it, uh, Color57, you know, there's a lot of guys I still have on my friends list that are, that are part of it, but the, my point is, you know, we, we really rocked the house on MAG, and it was, what was MAG was all about, was teamwork, and we really used the teamwork advantage to our edge. There wasn't one game that we couldn't win. We are we we were great, really, a great team to work with, and you know a lot of a lot of Mad Clans in the in the Raven universe really agreed as well. You know we weren't all the whole kill death ratio, win loss ratio, Grims over hours type of elite people. We were players doing our job, our part for our faction. So that we could win contracts and get those bonuses and show Severin Valor who's fucking boss. You know, because that, that's what it was about, the contracts. And I remember this big push by Valor on the Triple T weekend. They got the contracts for three days. And we had them back for the whole month as soon as, as, soon as that was over. That was great. Three whole days on the Triple T and then we got them all back. It was just so much fun. Um, you know, big pushes on the forums. They would organize this massive group and we go in there and you know play domination or sabotage or acquisition to get the contract we get the contract we're like yeah you know that's accomplishment that you can't get in other games you play as a team for your faction so you can win the match and that match goes on the record and whoever wins the most matches wins the contract it had a little bar system you'll see it in some of my videos but that's what MAG was, and it's honestly more than just MAG. It's also a family to me, and when it, when it was shut down today, it's like five years of hard work just went down the tubes. It hurt, but I know I'm going to find something else just as good or even better. But anyway, enough from me. There's a couple other people on DT I'd like uh, to say a couple words. Their names are Damo Ninja and Wesex. Now you know them on PSN as that. And I'm going to turn things over to them, and then we'll get back to business here, okay? You there? Hey, DTA clan members, I am Demon Ninja, and this is what I look like. This is my beautiful face. Dude, I just found out I don't have to work tomorrow. Fucking awesome. And, uh, yeah, uh, I started playing MAGA. A couple of years ago in 2011 and uh, the uh, I met the I joined Raven because my dad was on Raven and I was like oh I want to play with Mag with my dad and that's what I did pretty much and uh, after that I got into Valor and my friend convinced me to go into Raven and uh after 
after I went to Raven, I started playing, and then Josiah got me into the clan and was like, oh, man, you should join the clan. I was all for like a week or so because my connection was an open one, very open one, you know, open like a something something. And uh, it was pretty great. I got into the clan, you know, a couple days later, I had a match with the Matt Rules, Steve. I think Mike, and maybe Jace, quite possibly Lethal, I forgot, I know it was real Steve and Joe, that's about it, that's, and, uh, probably should have run those questions down, because now I feel like a retard, um, okay, um, hmm. Well, my final, well, my thoughts are of Mag before I started sucking. My thoughts were pretty good. I liked the game. I mean, it got kind of annoying to me. Because, I mean, I was one of those guys like, oh, gotta kill, gotta kill, gotta kill. And then I derped really hard when I was on Valor, finding out I can be level 4 or 5 and still be a medic. So there I was, level 58. Still don't have a med kit. And then I got a med kit, then went to Raven. Uh... But yeah, I, I really like the game. It was it's very unique, you know. And there's few, if any, games where you can just choose your own military corporation to fight for in, you know, a, a war. And it's in, in this massive. And, you know, some games might have that, and it's like 8 on 8. This is 32 on 32, or 128 versus 128, or 30-something versus 30-something versus 30-something, get 96. I believe that is 32. Um, my final thoughts on Mag, I still think it's a very unique game. Probably one of the best, shoot most underrated shooters. And probably one of the best. It's very underrated, I mean. I saw almost nothing of it until my dad, I saw my dad play it. And, you know, I think I saw one video for it years ago. Uh, when I had Cox Cable. And I was on the G4 uh, on demand thing. And I saw it, and I was one of those little eight year olds or whatever. It was like, oh, X or PS3 sucks, Xbox for the win. And then I got the PS3 in 2011. I was like, PS3 for the win. Xbox is. Uh. I mean, it's still kind of like Xbox. Excuse me. Um, let me see. Oh, yeah. Probably one of I don't I have a lot of pretty good mag memories, but I mean probably like the best kind of memories were just like when we had full if not near full squad and we were just we all had the mics on we were just talking and we were just you know we might not have been winning but we were just like doing stuff we were doing work and stuff like that then dust happened and ruined everybody. And then I didn't get on for a couple of months because I moved and I got on. And it's. The first person I played with was Joe. The person I played with when I got back. And Mag is probably one of my favorite games. It's like. Best shooters I've played. It's pro I mean, Honestly, I'd put. It'd be a tie between Halo and Battlefield and Mag. It's like a three way tie. And the Medal of Honor, second, and Call of Duty, and whatever. But yeah, that is my forum question. Um, thumbs up. This is Mag for the win. Yeah, look at this amazing gameplay, look at that Boudini. Okay, I'm uh, Wes, uh, PSN Wesex, and I've been a long time member of Dark Firebird, or DTA as our tag went. I was introduced to Mag, fun enough through a friend who never really got into it himself. He brought the game around one day uh, to see what I thought of it, because he wasn't really enjoying it. And I we didn't know what to make of it at first. It was very different to any of the games I played on console at that point. Up until then, my main 
multiplayer experiences had been Halo 3, which itself was an amazing game, but very different to Mag, and Call of Duty, which I stopped playing after COD 4 in any serious way. When I started playing the game, I honestly didn't know what to make of it. Again, just how different it was, the scale of the games, it wasn't an eight-man frag fest of everyone running around spraying and paying. You had organised groups of people using military tactics, large amounts of communication, serious organisation going on behind the scenes, not even through the game itself, but players getting organised to try and win. Not just for themselves, it wasn't just a case of people trying to win for their clan or their friends, it was for their faction, because that is what the game was all about. People were militant about their factions, people got into the meta game of things, their faction, their PMC, is what mattered to them. Clans were important, friends were more important still, but nothing was more important than the faction, and that is ultimately what made MAG a great game. It wasn't just for people wanting high KD ratios for bragging rights, and it wasn't filled with people trying to quick shop for their montages, it was filled with serious players, serious gamers who understood that teamwork was more important than personal victory. I became a member of the clan quite early on in my gaming days, I'd only been playing for about a week or two, and I realised I wasn't doing that well on my own. Um, it's not a game where you can. I, I had a headset, but I wasn't finding that many people to seriously communicate with. You'd occasionally chat to one or two people, but only on the small scale. I went onto the forums, and I was flicking through the clans on Raven, and a lot of them were quite elitist. A lot of them were saying, we only want this level, we only want people with this sort of experience, uh, only people with this time or that time, and the name came up. DTA Dark Firebird. The name interests me in itself. I flicked onto the page and what I saw was a really inclusive group of players. It didn't matter your skill level, your times, whether you could make certain commitments. If you were willing to play together when you could and at whatever skill level you had, they were willing to take you in, put you with other guys and you'd become one of them never mattered all the extras that people wanted you to bring, whether you could like make certain times, especially as I'm not in the US. And I started playing with them. And I improved quickly. Everyone improved quickly in DTA. Because we supported each other. It was... It was about more than... It was about more than just winning. It was about making sure we all stuck together and we all could do our part, whatever it was. You had some guys who uh, were a bit older than everyone else, you know, guys with kids, they couldn't play as much. And if, you know, if they couldn't get the high kill to death ratio, that didn't matter. We w worked with them and said, look, you can do this really well, you know. Um, if you gear your guy towards repairing, we'll make sure you always get points and you're always doing something useful. And that is how I ended up loving Mag probably more than any other game tying with Halo and that should tell you a lot because anyone who knows me knows how much time I put into Halo with my friends and it was because of the friends I made on this game that kept me. The friendships I made on this game to tell you how well they've lasted and compared to any other games I was away from the PS3 for two years I had to sell it because of money and I was trying to join the army which I was successful in um, unfortunately it didn't last as long as I wanted but the guys that I met on this game even when I didn't have a PS3 and so I couldn't be playing them week in or week out they were still there for me I was chatting to them online they were asking how I was go uh, doing it was, it was more than just individuals who wanted other good players to game with it was like a, it was like a family we, you know, we fought sometimes not everyone always got on without problems but at the end of the day, sticking together was more important than anything else. And this game, probably more than any other I can think of, has completely changed the way I view gaming, especially multiplayer. As I said earlier, it wasn't about the usual kills 
and whatnot. It was about winning for something bigger than yourself and being some part of something bigger than yourself. Your faction holding a contract gave you a real sense of pride because you knew how much work had gone into that. It wasn't just a case of people won a few games and then they had earned the right to brag. You all knew that everyone in the faction had to be pulling their own weight and more to push through to bring those contracts back to your faction and that carried over into everything to do with the game. The website was more than just a place for people to comment about how they didn't like certain changes. It was a case where people got organised and went, oh, okay, we've got this many clans, this many people that we're going to bring together to make a push. And people just went along with it. Didn't match it matter our personal rivalries. There were plenty of clans we didn't get on with within Raven itself, but that didn't bother us. If it, if someone came and said all Raven clans, you know, the Raven Alliance, we need to push back. We're getting our asses handed to us. That all went out the window. The little personal rivalries didn't matter. We were getting into the game of domination, and we were taking back the contracts. We we're pushing through. Valor's base on acquisition to steal their vehicles. We were con we were pushing Sever back at their uplink, so the Savo contracts would be ours. And it wasn't. It was sorry. It was more than a game. It was almost. It was almost like a social. Because if you met someone outside of the game who was into Meg, all those fac all those faction rivalries didn't matter because. They knew. They knew how much work you'd put into the game, and you knew how much work they'd put into the game. We hated each other, don't get me wrong. Raven and Sever, everyone kind of was sort of more bemused by Valor. But Raven and Sever, on record, did not get along. And that carried on outside the game in a lot of ways. But if you met someone face to face, and you said, oh, have you ever played Mag? And they go, hell yeah. It didn't matter because it was our game. In the game we had killed each other, hated each other and spouted abuse towards each other. Out of the game you knew they got it in a way that nobody else did. As for my personal life to do with the game, I, I don't think there's anything else I haven't covered apart from the friends I've made on this game have lasted through past Mag. They're the sort of friendships that now that Mag's gone we're not all going to splinter off and go, oh well it was fun while it lasted. We're the sort of friends who'll get together on the Saturday night and go, right, where do we go now? What's our next move? The amount of creativity the game allowed me to have, as I was de facto a high member of the clan um, while I was available to play with them, the amount of custom things people wanted me to design, which at the time I was looking to go into a career in graphics, was amazing. You know, I had people different faction, different clans, messaging me going, oh, can you make this, can you make that? And being allowed, you know, being allowed to make things for my clan itself that they thought was a high enough calibre was brilliant. It meant I had a reason to do something. I wasn't just arsing around on Photoshop going, oh, this looks cool, that looks cool. I had people going, can you make this? We need this made, we need that made. Can you do this? And the responsibility was probably one of the most enjoyable things I've ever had. It was a game where you had to rely on people and in turn if people were relying on you, you know sure as hell you could rely on them. Now the game's meta content was probably one of the greatest things about it. The factions carried over outside the game. You'd see people on their Facebook walls, on other forums with tags saying, you know, Sever a pro or uh, Shadow Raven Industries creating the heroes of tomorrow and it was so prevalent your online identity that it was all all you could think about your friends might be playing Call of Duty and whatnot and you know having fun but you weren't having fun in the same way you were having more fun and more pain because of how much it meant to you this game it wasn't it wasn't simple it was a very complicated thing with a lot of behind the scenes work that had gone into it both from the developers and the players to make the game what it was 
and it hasn't been matched on consoles to this day. The only possible match we'll ever find for it might be Planet Side 2 on the PS4 with its factions and large scale gameplay, but only time will tell with that. The fact that the game didn't want flippant players was probably one of the greatest things. It was a true gamer's game. You got into it, you got out of it what you put into it. If you just wanted to spend five minutes and be better than everyone else, it you know, it was basically all off you go. You're not wanted here. What we want are people who are going to work together. If you can't learn, if you're not willing to ask questions to improve and you expect everything handed to you on a platter, there wasn't a place for you. If you're willing to stop and go, hang on, I'm really not doing well, what am I doing wrong, can somebody show me? There were people who would show you. And in turn, you'd go, you know, wow, you've improved my ability to play so much, you can count on me any time you want me to assist you. I'm there, I've got your back. And the fact that the game's now gone is quite a big blow. I didn't realise until now how much it kind of means that the fact that it's not there. I remember it went quiet for a long time, but it was still there. There was still the chance of maybe something will change, maybe there'll be another big push for a big weekend, maybe, you know, maybe it will come back. And now that it's gone, you know, that's not going to happen. And I don't know if I can speak for the rest of the guys, but it kind of feels a bit lost with my gaming life. I'm not a Call of Duty player. I used to be a Halo player, but that series is dead as well. And the fact that there's no specific home for us, with the same factionality, the same drive to win for something that's more than you, games like Battlefield are great, and I love them, but winning or losing doesn't matter beyond your own personal skills. If you accomplish what you're trying to accomplish in the game to unlock things or achieve certain things, you know, that's great, that's fine. It's good if you've got nothing else to do. But it's not a game where winning means anything. And I'm just worried that the, with the way the gaming industry has gone, that there won't be any more games like that because of how uninclusive they are. Most games just want to cater to everyone and they aren't willing to risk not attracting the same hardcore crowd because they won't make as much money. Sorry, it's just kind of strange thinking about how MAGA's gone. But it, it's not all bad. There is a silver lining. The friendships we have made on this game, all of us, will last. You hear names that you remember from other clans, other factions even, and you see them on another game, and it's a case of, hey, how you doing? It's been a long time. Haven't killed you in, you know, God, what must be months now. And it's a good atmosphere. We, it's a shared experience that we all have, and that if you didn't play it in the same way, if you weren't part of it, you won't understand. I can try and explain, we can all try and explain, but the friendships we made here are just as real as ones you can make out physically. Because we all we all bled together, we all fought together, we all kicked ass and we got our asses kicked together. And at the end of the day, that's all you can really expect from a game. To give you a good fight, something to enjoy. But Mag is gone now, and you can't dwell on the past. I just hope that anyone out there who remembers the game sees this, will try and get in contact, get in touch, and we can still keep Mag alive in our hearts if nowhere else, because this game meant a lot to a lot of people. And I'm Wessex, and that is all I have to say about Mag. Um, I, I, those are just a couple of words from our members, uh, as you see in the previous video with Jace, and you know that just shows you guys um, 
how great this clan is and how much awesome times we had in Mag and you know who we are. But now that Mag's dead, uh, we have to find another game. Uh, it doesn't matter what it is. If it's similar to this game, that's okay. It doesn't have to be exactly what it was. But I'm not going to settle for anything less than 32 players because that is just ridiculous. Um, anyway, um, thanks for watching the Mag Week videos. You know, um, if you if you're out there and you watch this, go ahead and visit www.darkfirebird.clannow.com and click the uh, sign up. And if you know about us, we'll gladly accept you from Rag. It doesn't matter where you're from. Well, you know, we'll get you right in there. So, you know, if you have any questions, let me know. And uh, thanks for playing with us at DTA over the last five years. You're all amazing, and I wouldn't be here without you. Not much is true. Thanks again, Mag fans. Rules out.